Hi everyone, I'm assuming that by watching this video you've already imported spreadsheets into ServiceNow sometime in your life. It's a bread and butter operation and we do it all the time. Well did you know that you can also import spreadsheets using Integration Hub and you can also apply data transformation to your data without scripting. Let's find out how. You may or may not know that ServiceNow is moving a million miles an hour towards no code and low code development. And the feature of importing spreadsheets using Integration Hub is part of this general movement. Now we are looking at a relatively new feature in ServiceNow. It was introduced in Rome. So there are some advantages and some disadvantages as well in this current release, which we're looking at in San Diego. But I'm expecting in the next releases, whether it's Tokyo or Utah or whatever release that comes after that, uh, we're going to see some significant improvements to this feature. Okay, so now having said that, let's find out how this feature works. Let's go to Integration Hub Import. Uh, one word still, even though officially it's two words, Integration Space Hub, uh, but in the UI it's still one word. And Integration Hub Import right here. Now you will need a subscription for this particular feature uh, for Integration Hub and you'll need the plugin, the data stream plugin for Integration Hub. So depending on your subscription, you may or may not have this plugin as part of your subscription. So once we do have it open, let's go ahead and create a new integration. Okay, so what we're going to do is import a spreadsheet. It looks a little bit like this here. So it's just a simple list of service desks with uh, name, location, parent, cost center, type, and manager. So we'll give this a name and just copy that into the description as well because it is a mandatory field. Save it. Okay, so one of the good things about using Integration Hub to import your spreadsheets is that you can actually check that you're importing the right data before you go ahead and create your transform maps. So we'll select the data source as the file that we want to upload. So it won't be a, an Integration Hub spoke, it won't be a data stream. We'll select file and then select Excel. And then we'll go ahead and just drag and drop that spreadsheet over. Okay, so the good thing here, as I said, is that you can actually preview the data structure before you proceed. So if I were to do the following and select the sheet number as one, and also the header row as one, let's have a look at our spreadsheet here. The header row is actually two, not one. So if we just come up here to the top and select load source data structure, we'll get a preview here of the fields uh, that we've collected um, and they are not the ones that we want. So we've got an opportunity now to correct that and specify two as the header row and then load the data structure once more. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so let's go ahead now and move to our transform map. You can see on the left hand side here, there's like a little menu to follow. So we've specified the data source already now. And now the next step is to go ahead and create the transform map. So let's click on add a mapping. Specify the target table name. There we go. <laughs> We will select group. So similar to when you create uh, transform maps uh, in the regular interface, you have the opportunity to turn off business rules if they are hampering or slowing down the speed of the import, and especially if you've got a large number of records to import, it may be wise to disable business rules. And you also have the opportunity to import synchronously as well. But by default, we are importing asynchronously. So let's save that and then go ahead and open up our transform map. Okay, so on the right hand side, we've got all the fields from our target table, our group table. And on the left hand side, we've got the data structure from our spreadsheet. So now it's just a simple operation of dragging and dropping across the fields from the source table to the target table and doing a few other things, which we'll look at. We'll look at data transformations in particular. That's one of the best things about 
using this interface. Um, it resembles a little bit uh, Flow Designer because you've got these kind of data pools. So we can just drag and drop them over. So we've got the name that will just go over to the name field here. Um, I'll do all the simple ones first. So we'll take parent and put that down the bottom. Unfortunately, these fields here are not in alphabetical order. So sometimes you have to search a little bit manually for the correct field. Uh, location, we're going to deal with a little bit later. Uh, manager, I will just pop that in there. And you'll notice for all the reference fields and choice fields, just like in a regular transform map, you have the opportunity here to select what happens or what to do in the case where there is no exact match for that value, whether you still want to proceed and create uh, the record and create the value, or if you want to ignore the field, or if you want to actually skip importing that entire record. So that works the same way here. Okay, so the next field I will take is type and pop that down there. Let's try that again. There we go. And cost center. I'm going to push this over here as well. So I think we've nearly got most of our fields and data there. Okay, so the really big thing about using this interface is that you can apply inline data transformations. Let's take a look. For all these pills that we've got here, you can see similar to Flow Designer, you've got this inbuilt function or transform button here. If you select that, you get this little library of transformations to perform. Okay, so it's not as big as what you would see in Flow Designer, but nevertheless, it is a start and you can perform some of the most common transformations right here without having to script because if you were to have to do this in the regular interface, building your transform maps, there would be no option other than to script. Okay, so things like uh, moving or converting text uh, to all uppercase, uh, rounding off numbers, converting to numbers, uh, replacing text, either using regex or just a regular find and uh, replace search here. Uh, you can trim the spaces of your strings that appear at the front and the end of your strings. And you can also convert to Boolean and you can also convert to a date. If you're not really sure or you know what's going to be uh, what's going to happen with these operations, just click on the little help there and sometimes you actually get uh, examples as well. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at how we can use some of these transformations right now. The first one we're going to look at is concatenation. So we can actually take uh, or populate more than one data pool in this field here. Okay, we're not restricted just to one value. So for the description field uh, down the bottom here, I'm actually going to use a combination of the group name as well as the location. So let's just pull the name and bring that down to the description here. I'm going to add a comma. So you can actually add and hard code text values here. And then after the comma, I will add the location right there. And yeah, that's it. So the description of our new group will be the group name followed by the location. Let's take a look at another example. So if we go to our spreadsheet here, we can see there's actually a, a couple of fields here that have some white space at the beginning. Service desk admins here, the group name, as well as the ITIL type here. Now what you can do with uh, string fields is trim white spaces from the front and the end of those strings. So, so just to be on the safe side, we could come to our name field here, click on the function button there, and then select trim. Okay, there's no other parameters you have to specify. You can just select OK, and that will just, as it is described here, just trim the, the white space from the beginning and the end. Okay. However, you will find that ServiceNow is actually smart enough to kind of do this for you for most field values. So I think even if I didn't specify that transform uh, there uh, for that particular field, uh, we will be just fine. I think for reference fields, it's even smarter because it will just say, okay, is there a match for the value? If so, let's just reconcile it to that value and remove that white space in doing so. 
Okay, so the next transform we'll perform is on the cost center. So in my spreadsheet here, I've got some cost centers here, 2600, 25 and 2400. But let's assume that the cost centers here or the 2600 ones were incorrect or they needed updating and we needed to specify 2700 instead. Well, that is real easy to do here. We just select our transform button here for our cost center, go to replace, and then it's just a simple find and replace operation here. So I can find all instances of 2600 and then just replace them with 2700. Click OK and that's it. Okay. Notice also that if we wanted to perform further transforms here, we can do that. We're not just limited to one here. Another operation we can perform to replace text is by using regex. So what I'm going to do here is to populate the email field. Now, if we look at our spreadsheet, we actually don't have an email address here. But if we were to assume that the email address is actually the name of the group minus all the white spaces plus at company.com, uh, we could do that quite easily here as well. So let's come back here to our email. Now, the first value that we need is the name of the group again. So let's come over to our name and drag and drop that over. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so as we already mentioned, we can actually hard code values here. So I can actually append to this the at company.com here domain. Okay, so the email address at the moment would look like the group name at company.com, but we know that our group names actually have white spaces, so we need to get rid of those. So we can come again to our transform, select regex, replace, and then if you know a little bit of regex, <laughs> you may know already that the um, uh, backslash S uh, will match all white spaces, we can leave the replacement here blank, so we can just select OK, and that will just clear all the white spaces between the group names, OK? And I think we are just about done. OK, so before we move on, let's speak about some of the limitations that I know of, at least uh, with this interface. So one thing that you cannot do here is employ your own scripts. What you put in here is text only. It will be interpreted as text. Even if you were to write JavaScript in here followed by a colon and then code something, uh, it wouldn't work. Uh, so this is something that you can do uh, in certain field properties in ServiceNow. You can just uh, add the JavaScript name there and it will interpret what follows as JavaScript, but you can't do that here. So if you want to do any kind of scripting, any kind of more advanced operations for your transformations, then you'll have to use the regular transform maps uh, or that regular interface. And one final limitation I've noticed as well is if we just go ahead and save that first of all, and then move to or come back to our transform maps here, it's actually not a list. And what I mean by that is that you can only have one transform map here. Okay. In other words, one data source, one transform map. Not like you could previously in or in the regular interface where you can have one data source with multiple transform maps. You can't have that here. So this button here on the top right, add a mapping, it's grayed out. Okay. Again, this is a relatively new release feature. Uh, the final step is now to go ahead and schedule an import. So you can actually go ahead and click here to create a new schedule uh, for this import. But because it's just a spreadsheet, it's kind of a one-off import at the moment. So I'm not going to worry about setting up a schedule. Instead, I'm just going to click on Run Import. Okay, so that's already started. So in your executions here, everything is kind of blank, but there is a refresh button here. If you click on that, okay, we can see here it's uh, executed. And if we open up that record, we can see some reports on the progress and the results of that transformation. So, okay, so uh, let's go to our target table. Let's come to our groups here. I've got a filter here pre-configured for updated today. So let's click on it to refresh. 
And now we've got our six records. So we can see here, let's open up one of these records here. We've got the name, we've got the manager, we've got the description, that concatenation of the service desk name plus the location of the group. We have the group email, okay? We didn't uh, remove or um, convert to lowercase, but we could also do that uh, as well. Um, but that email will function just fine. Uh, we've got the parent, we've got the cost center, and we've got the type ITIL. If we go to one of the other groups, one of the actual country groups for Sweden, Denmark, or Norway, we should find that the cost center is now 2,700 instead of 2,600. Okay, so let's open up Denmark. And the cost center is 2700 as expected. So there you have it. So that's how you go ahead and import spreadsheets using Integration Hub. As you can see, the user interface is a lot easier and cleaner. You can just use those data pills to drag and drop from your source table to your target table to create field maps. And in particular, the big feature is, is that you can create data transformations without needing to script. Okay, so thanks very much for watching and see you next time.